So at this point, you've read or heard several times that geospatial technology is fundamentally um, based upon locational data, um, communicating it, navigating with it, analyzing it, which begs the obvious question, what is locational data? Or how do we describe locational data? Uh, when we're talking about where something is, what do we mean by where? Well, within a GIS environment or any kind of geospatial technology, we rely on a coordinate system to describe location. Uh, and a coordinate system is basically just a numeric system for describing a position in terms of relative to some kind of a reference point, usually how far it is from that reference point. And this should be a somewhat familiar concept. If you can think back to your high school geometry class, or maybe you're taking a math class right now that involves graphs, uh, this should be a familiar sight to you. This is a Cartesian coordinate system, and it's just a graph that has two axes on it. Uh, one is the x-axis and the other is the y-axis. Uh, and what's significant about those two axes is that they intersect, where they intersect rather, is called the origin of the graph. And so the origin is important because if we want to describe the position of anything within this theoretical space, this two-dimensional space, it's basically just in terms of how far it is from that origin. So a simple example, if we were interested in finding out uh, what the position is or of, of that particular point right that I just drew, we would describe that position in terms of how far it is from the origin. And when we say how far, we mean how far along the x-axis and how far along the y-axis. So we start with the x-axis and we say, okay, starting at the origin, going along the x-axis, we notice that it's four units along the x-axis. So that's our first number for our coordinates. The second number that we want is how far it is along the y-axis. So then we go up from that point and we notice that it's two units up from that, from along the y-axis. So the coordinate for that, coordinates for that location, for that position of that dot right there is four, two. And that's it, essentially. So our reference being the origin of this graph, uh, and we've established the distance, we have the position, as long as we're working within this particular space. The same basic thing applies to the Earth, just on a slightly larger scale. So for the Earth, the two axes of, of interest that define the origin and that we use as a reference point uh, are the equator, which runs right down the middle of the Earth like this, and then the prime meridian, which runs through Greenwich, England, through West Africa, right, and then cut, cutting through the South Atlantic. So these two lines are going to be the basis upon which we describe um, locations all across the Earth. The thing, though, that makes it more complicated is that the Earth is not flat or two-dimensional like the Cartesian coordinate distant grid, but rather roundish. Um, and so that roundishness, the curvature, rather, of the Earth introduces a little bit of complication because a curved line is not the same length as a straight line. Uh, and so when we work with um, the Earth, we um, are forced to work with what are called spherical coordinates. Uh, coordinates excuse me. And spherical coordinates essentially are going to be angles. We're going to be working with angles, angular measurements, rather than working with linear units. Like instead of working with meters or miles or kilometers, we're going to be working with degrees. So how does this work? Well, let's start with the uh, equator. So the equator, again, which runs through the middle of the Earth, uh, is the starting point from which we will measure our north-south position. So if you are north of the equator, okay, then you're in the northern hemisphere. If you're south of the equator, you're in the southern hemisphere. When we describe our uh, position on Earth relative to the equator, we're describing our latitude. And our latitude is technically described as an angular distance from the equator. And that angular distance um, can range between 0 degrees, assuming that you're standing on the equator, to as high as 90 degrees when you're at either of the two poles. The only thing that distinguishes them is when you is by designating whether or not you're in the northern or southern hem hemisphere. So let me look at another, uh, let's look at it another way. So the way that this is measured, um, well, a way of imagining the way this is measured, this is not actually the way it's measured, is to imagine that we're measuring our position on the surface of the Earth uh, according to an angle drawn from the center of the Earth from the equator. So, for example, um, if you're standing on the equator here, okay, let me bring up my tool again, uh, 
So if you're standing right here, okay, you're right on the equator, and so your latitude is zero degrees. Right? Now if you're further up, okay, that position right there is described in terms of this angle, okay, that's formed from the center of the Earth. So if you imagine this angle, whoops, not a very straight line, sorry about that. <laughs> so that angle that's created, all right, from here is your latitude, right? So in this case, it's measured at 30 degrees. If you were standing at the geographic North Pole, the angle that would be created would be essentially a right angle. And so that would be 90 degrees. And that's the highest angle that you can have. So then again, latitudes range between 0 and 90 degrees, and it works whether you're in the northern hemisphere or in the southern hemisphere. Okay, so that's latitude. What about longitude? What about our east-west position? Well, the prime meridian kind of acts in the same capacity the equator does, except in the east-west position. So the prime meridian, if you are east of the prime meridian, you are in the eastern hemisphere. If you're west of the prime meridian, you're in the western hemisphere. Simple enough. Right. So when we describe locations in terms of our east-west position, we're describing our locations in terms of how far we are from the prime meridian. So if you're standing on the prime meridian, say if you're, you're at Greenwich, England right there, right, then you are at zero degrees longitude. You're at a starting point. Right. But if you're some distance away from the prime meridian, just like with the equator, we're going to measure out an angle right, to your location. And that angle is the measurement of longitude. So in this case, you are 30 degrees west of the prime meridian. Okay. So it's important to keep in mind here that when we're talking about degrees, um, we're, we're talking about distances essentially. Um, so the degrees um, at the equator, a degree is roughly equivalent to about 69, almost 70 miles in length. So one degree is almost 70 miles in length. Um, and that length stays stable. Um, for latitude, it's always about that length. Longitude it varies depending on where you are on the Earth. We'll get to that later. But suffice it to say for the moment that degrees of latitude and longitude are measurements of distance. And they're measurements of distance from either from the equator in the terms of latitude or from the prime meridian in terms of longitude. So there you go. Prime meridian and the equator are the two axes, so to speak, on Earth from which we measure all locations on Earth and allow us to establish a position.